Hello, everyone. Welcome to Avaya's Healthy Aging Curriculum. I'm Andy Anderson. My partner, Ike Allen, and I are teachers, mentors, and the co-owners of Avaya University. Avaya is the creator of over a thousand books, films, courses, teachings, and other supportive resources. Thank you so much for being here. Our fellow teacher, Robert Scott Bell, is here today to talk with you about how healthy how healthy aging goes through your gut. So we're going to talk a lot about gut health. Robert is a homeopath homeopathic practitioner for over 25 years now. He's an author and an expert in silver therapeutics. He personally overcame numerous chronic inflammatory conditions that he suffered through the first 24 years of his life through things like dietary changes and homeopathy, supplementation, and other non-drug approaches, and we will talk all about that. He's also a keynote speaker, lecturer, and hosts the popular Robert Scott Bell radio show where he discusses everyday health issues from the perspective of alternative and holistic health care. So thank you so much for being here with us, Robert. Hey, thanks, Andy. I appreciate all that you do, and I'm grateful to, to be with you and, and those who have uh, followed on all the good works that you've been working on for a lot of years. So i um, glad to be here. And the healthy aging aspect so important because, as you described in my brief bio, I kind of got all my old age diseases done first. <laughs> I don't think I had a conscious plan to do that, but I realize now I look back, I'm like, my gosh, did I age as a child? And now I'm reversing it ever since I figured this thing out. So could you share a little bit more about that? Like, what did you struggle with when you were um, a, a boy and, you know, younger person? Like, what, what was going on? Well, I, I, I look back now, and I, I was the canary in the coal mine of my generation and born in the 60s. And at that point, uh, chronic disease was still somewhat rare for young people. Now we're hearing of numbers like 54% of all young people in America have chronic ailments or illnesses. These, if you think about it, were considered previous to that diseases of old age. Who, who had a chronic disease as a child? That's crazy. But I grew up with so many of them from gastrointestinal, which is the big, you know, big lesson of my young life, uh, to respiratory allergies, uh, histaminic responses, hyperimmune responses, uh, acute infections that eventually became chronic infections, always met with antibiotic therapy, which if you've listened to my show, I describe antibiotics as a form of chemotherapy. And I think we need to rearrange our hearing so that when a doctor says, I'm going to prescribe for you an antibiotic, I want people to hear, I'm going to prescribe for you to you uh, some chemotherapy. And that you would think, whoa, 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 it's just an infection, doc. Why chemo, right? Because it's that serious, the damage that was done to me and to so many by these things that we just kind of go, hey, it's uh, just another candy prescription, right? And uh, there was not only that, but musculoskeletal inflammatory conditions. As a child, as a teenager, uh, I had, uh, gosh, skin conditions, rashes that wouldn't go away without steroidal treatments topical steroids. These are powerful uh, uh, hair hormones that, uh, uh, you know, the synthetic variety that can actually suppress your immune system and destroy and damage your liver. And so by the time I figured this out, I had suffered through 24 years of being pharmaceutically grown and aging through, you know, in an immediate sense, it's like, well, when was the health supposed to start, you know? <laughs> From day zero, you got ailments, illnesses, infections being met with what? Drugs. Now, at the time also, when I grew up, I was fully vaccinated. And that was an era where we had very few vaccines. You know, you can, you can probably count them on one, maybe two hands. But now we're talking about like 67 to 69 different shots for kids. So uh, where I was the one or 2% that was unusual to have a chronic ailments, 54% of American kids right? So I put that in context today. And that's why a lot of young people do listen to the show and go, Oh, man, I have all of that stuff. You had that I don't know anybody else that had that of your age group right now. I'm in the old age group. <laughs> so, <laughs> so aging has become a very important topic for me not realizing that I had uh, uh, kind of inadvertently found out how to do it in reverse you know, by right. getting the old stuff. I, and I know you don't have to suffer the way I did, but many people that already are, we could talk about any of those ailments. You can ask me about them, how I overcame them. But, uh, you know, as the topic will go today, Andy, uh, healthy aging 
definitely goes through the gut. So we'll hit that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so you can touch on that as I ask you this question. So what, like, what are some causes of premature aging? I'm sure a lot of things can relate to the gut in that realm, but could you just kind of take that question as a whole? Yeah, it, it's clearly uh, inflammation unchecked or uncontrolled, not suppressed, but unchecked via the mechanisms that our body is designed to do in terms of, of addressing uh, inflammation. Now, inflammation could be an acute interaction, like you, you get, you know, a, a big hit, you know, an actual physical uh, insult to your body that you can measure. You go, oh, yeah, I got an injury. All right. You, you, it's painful. It swells. There's inflammation, cellular inflammation. There are cytokines. These are part of the immune responses to help pr- prepare the body for regenerative events to occur. And so in an acute case, you you might get a bruise, the the body eventually absorbs and cleanses and moves the debris, the dead cells out, and your liver, your kidneys, your lymph all play a role in then moving that out. And then you say, hey, wow, the tissue's recovered. It's regenerated and it's as good as new. But what we're dealing with with aging is unchecked inflammation, not like in an acute injury, but it's like an injury that never resolves or a series of injuries that never resolve on a cellular level. Now, we can think in terms of a physical hit, but we got to broaden that concept of injury to, hey, what about a toxicological hit? Think about this uh, in terms of metabolic wastes. Let's just say we're eating good quality food even for the, for the sake of argument at the moment. What would we... Uh, like to know about this process that is unknown to us now like oh i had no idea that i'm constantly injuring my cells via metabolic waste and you think well that doesn't make sense because wouldn't my body know what to do with a waste product like you're eating good food you digest it you get the stuff out of it that you need it's used up these are waste products your body knows what to do to bind and then excrete send them out through the colon or the urinary tract and you so it's an unconscious thing you're like hey what's the big deal but If there is stress on the liver from environmental sources or emotional sources that overwhelm, for instance, that liver, which is your key organ of elimination, uh, then you now have an accumulation. That which would normally be bound and excreted readily is suddenly gone, oh, there's a backlog here. Mm -hmm. Like the garbage man didn't come this week. And so that trash can is going to sit and fester. And it's like, I'm starting to smell what's going on over there. I don't like it. And so that those components now need to be sequestered. Your body has to now deal with this accumulation. And and that's an energy drain already because normally the energy would be for movement, for growth, for healing. And now you're dealing with, I got to protect myself from whatever's growing over there. And I'm not even getting into environmental toxicity per se, as much as the environment in your body is now being stressed by normal waste products that you know what to deal with. Now, would it be that simple? Oh, it'd be wonderful. Back in the early days of homeopathic medicine, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann uh, developed a system of medicine that would eventually compete with the allopathic variety that I grew up on, modern medicine. And he designed this system to be uh, uh, based on the concept of like cures like. And so if you had an ailment, illness, or symptom or a picture, it would match uh, a remedy very easily, a single remedy. And Let me think of an example of this for everybody uh, to start. How about, uh, okay, a joint pain, Mm -hmm. right? Rust toxicodendron is the homeopathic name, Latin name for poison ivy, the poison ivy plant. Now, most people think of poison ivy, they think of a skin outbreak, and that's true, but there's also corresponding symptoms to poison ivy, a stiffness of the joints, interestingly enough. Mm. And so, Rostox is often indicated for arthritis, even sometimes gout, although there can be other uh, remedies that we can deal with, and gout is uh, a bioaccumulation of a waste product, a metabolic waste product known as uric acid. Okay, this is a byproduct of animal protein digestion. It's one of the waste products that when you're healthy and your liver is functioning well, you're hydrated, it goes to your liver, your liver converts the uric acid to the salt of the acid from the uric acid to the urate, like a sodium urate, to the urine, right? You follow that line and it's eliminated by a liquid media through the kidney or urinary system. But when the liver is not doing its job, 
it's sending things in forms that the kidney's not designed to handle. The uric acid is not designed to handle the acid. It's supposed to be converted. It's not being converted efficiently. And so your kidneys go, hey, we can't handle this either. And so now you've got this circulating waste product, this time metabolic, not foreign, not strange, not alien. And the body has to deal with it. And a lot of times it settles in a joint or, you know, often the history of gout is the big toe, but it can be in, in a muscle, even in a bursa where you can have inflammation and it's due to the accumulation of a waste product that could crystallize and create injury to tissue. And so now you've got to re react or respond to that. So uh, if I utilize, you know, Rustox, it could be the thing to go, oh man, I feel better. I mean, there are other things like colchicum and, and uricum acetum. There are different homeopathic remedies we can do to respond. Now that's an acute interaction. You might get benefit, but when you realize that there's a chronic component of liver congestion in this scenario, we go to Hahnemann again. This is a little bonus homeopathy. I don't know if anybody knew they were going to get this today. In the latter years, in the latter years, Andy, of Dr. Hahnemann's life, he rather than being among the German peasants that were farmers and strong and, you know, they had, if they had an ailment, it was acute, it was intense, right? Now he was among the aristocracy of Paris, the high society. The, the, uh, these are the people that didn't have to work the land. They had people do it for them. They could be sedentary. They could eat animal protein to excess because they could afford it. They could eat refined sugars, which were just now emerging. And that, that was creating problems. And so they would have these, what we now call chronic inflammation events that were not just, oh, a sudden onset. And they were like, these were ongoing. And Hahnemann began to see that their lifestyle was contributing to this inflammatory condition. And Rustox might not be the only thing to do. And now it began to expand the, uh, the understanding for homeopaths in the French approach. We became the clinical approach to look at this as a system failure, liver congestion, and so we began to look and say, hey, might we need to really look at the liver as opposed to just uric acid? Yeah, uric acid is the trigger, but it's the liver not able to handle it. So let's facilitate that. And we began to use things like Bryonia alba, which is wild hops in homeopathy, Nux vomica, which is the poison nut, which these are, again, homeopathy is not poison. You can derive it from natural poisons even or chelidonium, celandine plant, that is, these are all liver polycrest. And so you began to prescribe differently for an organ system to restore its function. And then suddenly it's like, whoa, by healing the liver, suddenly the arthritis went away. Even if I didn't give Rustox, for instance, although, you know, Rustox, interesting, can seemingly um, uh, help to gather up the uric acid that is accumulated. So I could still do both, but in conjunction with understanding the role of the liver. Now, I, I hope everybody's following Andy. And if they're not, just say something. If you kind of sense, well, oh, this is way too, too far to go here. But I think this is really cool. Carry on. Add to the mix the um, on top of metabolic waste or congestion due to stress or, you know, emotions that can, can impact the liver too. Anger can impact the liver. What now if we look at herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, glyphosate, um, heavy metals, additives, preservatives, flavorings, colorings. I mean, all of these things that are known to be carcinogenic even, but toxic poisons that the, meta, the body, the cells, like uric acid, it knows what to do with, if it can, if it's got the stuff to deal with. But now we're talking about foreign, toxic, man-made compounds that have never before been in the existence of nature. And in the past 100 to 150 years, we've asked the body to go, you got to figure this thing out and you got to deal with it. And now we compound not one or two or two. we're talking hundreds to thousands to some argue millions of new synthetic chemical compounds. And now we see inflammation that is unremedied, chronic, that the injuries are occurring in a subtle way all of the time, not like a big hit, like a trauma to the body. You go, oh, I know that happened. I know that's going to happen. Now you're subtly all the time. And if you grew up that way, you have no idea that happened because no doctor told you. And in fact, what the doctors told you was that, hey, if you got an ailment or an illness or an inflammation, here's aspirin, here's ibuprofen. Here's some Tylenol. Let's take the pain away. In the meantime, we destroy your liver and kidneys, the very organs of elimination that are primarily responsible for reducing those inflammatory components so that then the next phase of recovery comes in. 
that remedies the inflammation, that reduces the tissue inflammation, that upregulates the regeneration that is part of what? Healthful aging or no aging at all. Because as, as long as you're in a regenerative healing growth mode, you, you, look, my mom's 86 years old as of uh, just uh, January of 2020. She's on zero drugs, mm. zero drugs. And she goes out dancing twice a week. <laughs> That's awesome. People 30 years her junior can't keep up with her on the dance floor. Mm. And so it's not that she has, quote unquote, good genes, because there was a time in her, in her 50s when she was not well, she was on synthetic hormone therapy for menopause. She had many aches and pains. It was on med Like I said, I was pharmaceutically grown. She was duped by doctors. We were all were duped by doctors. And then she learned about homeopathy and organic food. And she's, you know, done these things that I did in my life to, to reverse it. Me at 24, her in her fifties. Now she's in her eighties. And there was a point where her body had sequestered a lot of garbage and she had a kind of a growth on her back. And it was a scary looking thing. It was like, and it started getting worse and worse as she was doing more and more holistic therapies and homeopathy. It got bigger and bigger, redder and angrier and pain. And, you know, her friends were all saying, oh, it could be cancer. Go to the doctor, get them to cut it out, get on chemo, whatever. She's like, oh, no, I'm, you know, working with my homeopath. And uh, eventually it opened up and literally chunks of hard tissue, foul smelling stuff came out of her. It was like a, 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 an alien movie. <laughs> you know, I joke <laughs> yeah. with her and she wrote about it in her autobiography that, that, uh, uh, you know, it was like a Buick was going to drive out of that thing it was so big. <laughs> and then it was like a turning point because she didn't suppress it. She encouraged it to come out that her, her life changed, her body changed. And now, like I said, 86, it's like how many 86 year olds that are telling, you know, Medicare to go take a hike. I'm not using drugs. I'm not paying for Medicare part D, even if I'm penalized. Cause I don't use drugs. I don't use doctors. Um, so I, you know, this is, this is just, I don't know if I've told the story this way, Andy, but it's like an intriguing topic of, of aging gracefully and healthfully. And it's like, I don't think many people in America know this. Mm, uh, yeah, right. Wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me in the world of where we're at in our state of health. And, and I guess like that leads me to my next question around like chronic disease, degenerative diseases. These are some, these are things that are so common that it seems like the the trend has been they're just normal parts of aging, right? So what what's yes. your take on that? Yeah, and that's great because we we become to accept aging as a as a process of degeneration, disease diagnoses, uh, drug deficiencies for which they are ready to write you scripts to yeah we'll cover that deficiency of a drug right, uh, but it really is a breakdown ultimately of the digestive tract, the alimentary canal, and the integrity, the microbiome as we learn about a lot now. The ability to break down food appropriately, get the good stuff out of it, the vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, etc., so that our body, our cells have the ability to, to do what they do, to function and grow and heal and regenerate healthily. And uh, if, we, if we recognize that over time, the degeneration is not due to, uh, what will we say, just because we're we, we're on the planet longer, that's it. No, it's a breakdown in the ability to deal with first of all metabolic waste, assuming that the food is clean, but knowing that it's not, it's now dealing with sequestering, binding somehow, and excreting the unnatural. Better way to say it, I don't know. Synthetics that man has created, not God. This is not a God-made problem. This is a man-made problem. And so our inability to deal with that over time causes the breakdown. So more of our cells are removed from growth and healing and put into uh, disease, fight or flight, decay, degeneration, and dying. And over time, that, you know, that from the vital force gets shifted, and then you're in that decline. And then they manifest as diagnosed diseases. Mm -hmm. So our goal should be to restore integrity to the interface from the outside world to the inside world, which is the GI tract, and we'll get into that. And also re re learn what is actually beneficial to put in there and stop putting the stuff that is not beneficial in. Even if it's invisible to you and all your doctor friends say, oh, that's silly. You don't have to eat organically grown food. You know, your body can handle all of this. It's like, well, our bodies can handle a lot, you know, but not a zillion, and I'm hardly exaggerating, synthetic toxic components coming in with some stuff that is good. And I'll, I'll give you this brief... Um, 
re- revisit to my babyhood mm-hmm. when my mom dutifully responded. The doctor says, hey, you know, breast milk, that used to be the thing. Now we got this stuff in a can way mm-hmm. better. Just add water, right? You don't have to bother yourself with breastfeeding. And she, you know, did it, shook it up, gave it to me. And I projectile vomited it out as fast as she gave it to me. <laughs> and it's like, what, what was he reading the label? Did he know? Yeah. Smart baby. Because even though there's some things in there that could sustain life, there's a lot of other stuff that's in the way. And if it's only, it, you know, initially you will reject it. That's a violent re- response, a sthenic strong response. Uh, but if, if it's the only thing you're given, the body is intelligent. Life is smart. It says, you know what? If we keep rejecting this outright, we're going to perish. We have nothing, right? So at that point, it's an, it's an adaptation for survival. Hans Salier, for those that understand, you know, the history of, of biology and all these things, it's really cool stuff. Adaptation syndrome. You adapt to survive. You're no longer thriving. You're surviving. That's the chronic state of disease. You're alive. Thank goodness. But you're chronically ill. Because you're dealing with things that you are not dealing with, <laughs> you know, you're ha- and so at that point you adapt, you're like, okay, let me try and find the stuff in there. That's good. We'll deal with that other garbage some other way. And you start tucking it away and it stores it for later. And as you break down the vital force, you lo- you lose the ability. Now I'll describe the vital force, not such in energetic terms. Now I'll talk about it in terms of mineral presence or absence. Key minerals that are so deficient in the soils and depleted in our body due to these toxic exposures on top of heavy metals as well, whether it be through vaccines or other things, amalgam fillings. Selenium, the single most important mineral that is deficient in terms of protecting against cancer, against all kinds of aging, against viral activity, and it is so absent. People think, I'll just eat some Brazil nuts. It's like, have you seen the latest results on Brazil nuts? It's a fraction of the micrograms it had back 50, 60, 70 years ago. So people are using old science to say, all I need to do is eat Brazil nuts. Mm -hmm. So supplementation becomes very important and critical. But a secondary critical important mineral is chromium, which has been refined out of the soils, refined out of the foods. And without chromium, we can't adequately deliver energy or the substance like sugars into the cells that need them to produce the energy and function properly for reproduction, for regeneration. And so people then focus only on insulin, insulin resistance. No, it's a chromium deficiency, type two diabetes, which is, it's an aging disease. used to be adult onset diabetes. Now kids type two diabetes, Mm -hmm. not juvenile. That's the uh, autoimmune response. I think primarily vaccinations. Uh, So we have chromium deficiency. And the third on my, you know, again, I'm not, at, we don't have time to go into all the minerals, but I, if, I, if I hit a few here, and, and a lot of these are focused on in my book, Unlock the Power to Heal, that I wrote with Ty Bollinger. The third in the triumvirate of importance is uh, silicon because that addresses connective tissue integrity. Silica, silicon. And most women think skin, hair, nail, silica, but it's so much more than that. All connective tissue depends upon silica. And if we have a, a deficiency of silica, we have connective tissue breakdown. Of course, that results in uh, inflammation unchecked, uh, cellular debris you know, can, can go anywhere, and cancer cells that exist in us all the time that are normally neutralized and moved on out in a healthy, otherwise healthy body suddenly can grow unchecked and, tr- and transfer around the body and metastasize. You don't die of the cancer cell itself, but the growth and metastasis. So silicon is essential. And when we talk about the interface from the inside world to the outside world, it's the GI tract, the connective tissue integrity of the epithelial lining, the barrier between the outside and the inside world. Your skin is epithelium. And when you have breakdown in tissue at the inside, they call it leaky gut, results in all kinds of immune dis- disarray, including allergies and eventually cancers. And so we have to correct that. So, um, I just mentioned those three briefly as, as a kind of a point of where we want to target for people to have a, a real value in like, oh man, I can now do three things at least that will transform my future immediately. Mm, absolutely. So, okay. So we have obviously the importance of the gut, how not taking care of the gut can lead to premature aging. And then like, what are other way, like anything else you can share around like actual you know, action steps people can take today on healing their gut as well as what to put into their gut. And you are, you did touch on that, but any, anything else there that could be like immediate for people, they could go do something sure. today to make a difference. Well, in, in the chapter of my book, uh, 
that I think is one of the most important uh, is on gut health. And we'll, we'll talk about how we, we can get that. A, a, in modern medicine, God bless them, they try their best. Honestly, they try their best, but they try to suppress inflammation within the GI tract, of which I had plenty growing up. Uh, so they'll ultimately, in the chapters titled, The Road to Colostomy Bags is Paved with Antibiotics and Prednisone. You know, they, they kill imbalances of a bacteria that uh, really result in more opportunistic dysbiotic microorganism growth that results in more antibiotics. They keep destroying not just the microbiome, but the lining itself. It's like chemotherapy bombs. And then they, in response to the inflammation that doesn't go away, they eventually, you know, go from one anti-inflammatory uh, drug to another, from non-steroidal to steroidal drugs, ultimately like prednisone, which is a very powerful steroid hormone that is destructive of the immune system by design and destructive of the liver. Oops, we didn't like that part, but hey, it does that. I'm sorry, we'll let you know. And you continue on these anti-inflammatories to the point where you destroy the, what's left of the connective tissue, and then they have to start resectioning your colon and giving you a bag to go to the bathroom and permanently. I'm, I'm, and this is happening to teenagers, not just old people. So when we talk about graceful aging, the things I experienced were like canary in the coal mine, warning everybody, if you don't pay attention to what's going on here, the next generations are toast. 54% of young Americans chronically ill, I think we've got enough warning. This is not normal. This is not healthy. This is not aging like it's designed to be. So what can we do? to reduce inflammation most immediately to tissue that has been injured without harming the tissue or surrounding uh, tissue or harming the liver. And this is where my expertise in silver therapeutics came to light. This is after it took me, uh, just, just so you know, two years when I was 24 to about 26 to really work intensely with dietary shifts, homeopathy and minerals and things to recover my gut. What it took me two years to do I share in the book in a little bit today, I can do for somebody, help somebody do in two months or less. Mm. It's like, dude, two months or less, I can do that. You know, I'm an American, I'm impatient, but I can do that, right? <laughs> and so it involves the use of silver hydrosol, a bioactive form of silver, because silver is used topically in burn care centers around the world because it helps to accelerate and regenerate healthy tissue without scar tissue formation. Now, the form of, of silver that they use called silvadine in hospitals is fractionally active compared to what I use with bioactive silver hydrosol, and it's a safe, low concentration. It doesn't disrupt what we call gut microbiome biodiversity. That's key, biodiversity at all, and it facilitates the regrowth of healthy new tissue, and it's a very simple program and protocol. So this bioactive silver hydrosol, along with aloe vera, Aloe vera is God's medicine for epithelial tissue as well. The two is like one plus one equals 300. And we see an acceleration via the combination of the two three times a day on an empty stomach. And then you could do probiotics at night and from a two year recovery to two months or less, depending on the severity of the starting point, whether it be colitis, Crohn's, irritable bowel, diverticulitis, et cetera. Haven't had a failure. The only failure is when people go back and eat glyphosate containing food. You know, it's like, what do you expect? You got to clean up what goes into your body. And by doing that, you restore integrity of the lining, then you can begin to replenish the microbiome itself. Then guess what? Breaking down, digestion is going well again. What else does the microbiome do? It's, it's part and parcel of the endocrine system. Your youth hormones depend upon your microbiome, right? They convert, uh, ultimately help with uh, the cholesterol to progesterone, testosterone, and, and uh, estrogens, things like that. You know, all of this goes through the gut. So restoring the gut means restoring healthy aging, whatever that will be for you, whatever your lifespan or health span is supposed to be, you won't get there until you go through the gut. Mm -hmm. And my protocol and program that I've worked with many doctors over the years on, it's just, I'm not saying it's the only way to get there. I'm just saying it's the most direct route, fastest route. And uh, even if you fall off the healthy eating wagon and you corrupt your gut again you can go back on it there's no law of diminishment in returns it'll still work it doesn't stop working but the point is i like to teach people to live differently so they don't need to do uh, what i had to do uh, but many people do because we are in a disastrously uh, devastating inflammatory cascade that we can't escape from with any drug and surgery although it could save your life it was caused by those in the same profession as the surgeons that they make their living off a of cutting on you. So 
uh, there's a lot of correction that needs to be done. And, you know, I've reached a lot of people over the years, but there's still a lot more to reach. Mm, absolutely. There's so, so much more to reach, which is right. The idea with this event and, and clearly all the work that you do. So, um, could you share a little bit about actually your free gift? Because we've talked about it so much. Like, I think you, is it a chapter you have for people that outlines this prop, this yeah. process? I mean, I love it if, if people would buy the whole book, uh, unlock the power to heal and you can get it through Amazon or Barnes and Noble online. But I felt that this chapter is so vitally important that I didn't want to deny anybody who couldn't spend 20 bucks on a book, right? So, all right, you come to robertscottbell.com and uh, we're going to give you access to that chapter, that entire chapter on the gut recovery protocol. And it goes into in the minerals. It goes into some homeopathic adjuncts and other things. And, and you guys can go to my website, sign up for email alerts, ask questions. I answer them on the air two hours a day, six days a week. Uh, and uh, that, that for me is like one of the most profound gifts I can give anybody because if it took me two years and I can help somebody to do it in two months or less, that's priceless, honestly. And, and so uh, whether you get the book or not, you can get the chapter. Awesome. Thank you. And everyone, there's a button below that links right over to Robert's website where you can grab that chapter and we'll also link over to your book. And are there any, like anything else like that you feel is super important? We, you know, want to address today as it relates to the gut health and healthy mm -hmm. aging, any last insights? Well, the, the, the quality of supplementation is important. I don't, I don't just say, Hey, take selenium and you go, whatever's the cheapest selenium to get because a lot of it is a, a, a synthetic isolate, sodium selenite. These things can, can accumulate in the body in a negative context, and I would never want that to happen. So I only use 100% whole food forms of nutritional supplements. I do not sell any supplements. So it's not me saying, oh, I want you to buy mine. I recommend not brand loyal, but specific product loyal. Even within brands, there are some like that's good, that's not good. So I'm, I'm going to go and get you those things or tell you what to do, and there are links up in my website to get you on the right path so you're not going to compromise the good thoughts and ideas that are sound with something that is less than ideal for your body to get back into the healthy growth and regenerative phases. And, and we need those minerals to regenerate. Not only we need to reduce the exposure to the things that are causing inflammation, but we got to give the body the ability to counter what's already there as we make better choices from this moment forward. Thank you. That's, that is super helpful because I'm sure people were wondering, right, where, what they should get, what kinds of things, um, products, uh, formulations, all that kind of stuff. So I appreciate you, you going into that and we can, um, again, link over to your site so people can have access to those resources. Thank you for doing this. It's been awesome to talk with you. I appreciate it. Andy, I'm so grateful. Uh, you know, you have a teaching institution and, and I don't have a passion at all to teach this stuff, as you can tell. No, uh, no. <laughs> so you drew it out of me. And, and again, uh, look, my goal and role in life and, and people hear my show every hour, I say the power to heal is theirs. And it is a God's honest truth. And it's a reminder for me to hear all the time because I was disempowered for my first 24 years. Doctor said, we don't know why you're sick. Good luck. Here's a drug, right? The power to heal is yours embrace that and begin to realize that you're always being given gifts like spirit however you decide what what is it that controls and governs the universe god always trying to get us to where we're healthier and it's a matter of overcoming the cacophony of those humans that want to control and own you and make you dependent upon them i'm more about freedom and i want you to be free to live the most extraordinary life you're here to do some amazing things it's a lot easier to do those things when you're not dragging and inflamed and sick like I was. And so it's so exciting when you're, when you're, when you're well, you can achieve everything. And it's not to say that you'll never have some down days, but that's part of life. But when you understand these processes, you won't be scared. You won't feel victimized. You're like, Oh, what did I do? Oh yeah, that's it. And so consciousness, you'll move consciously through life. Even in those down points, you'll go, you know what? I, I played a role in that. And, and, and so a lot of people don't like that, but the reality is when you embrace that, th that fear of the future, fear of cancer, all of that dissolves because you realize you're co-creating this life and the powerful tools you've been given uh, are accessible to you like they were to me even before I knew it. And then I tapped into that and it's like my life changed, my mom's life changed and yours can too. Mm, beautiful. Thank you, Robert. Thanks so much for doing this and being here with us today. And thank you everyone who is watching and listening right now for, for being here for yourself, for showing up for yourself on this healthy aging journey. And we'll see you again soon. Take care.